In this video we will talk about the Apostle Matthew. His birth name was actually, Levi. Later Jesus gives him, Matthew, for a name, which in Greek is, Matthaios, and in Aramaic, Matthai. The name means, Gift of Yah, Yah, being the short form of, Yahweh. So, in a nutshell, his name means, Gift of God. Matthew was an enlightened Galilean, of Hellenistic training, that is, a person dedicated to the study of ancient Greece in various aspects, such as its culture, history, linguistics, etc. Matthew worked as a tax collector in the days of the Roman Empire, nothing more and nothing less than by order of Herod Antipa, in the maritime city of the Sea of Galilee, Capernaum. More specifically, his work was related to the products that arrived through Genesaret or Tiberias. He collected tolls from people who came by water. A publican was a lessor of taxes or public income in ancient Rome, it was an impure profession before the Hebrew law, very frowned upon by the Hebrews. The reason is that these taxes were collected for the dominant foreign power, that is, the Romans. The Hebrew people considered publicans sinners and traitors, so they were prohibited from entering religious activities, social events, and also commercial events. So, since Matthew dedicated himself to that profession, he was rejected and despised by the Hebrew people. After Jesus healed a paralytic, he went on to Capernaum, and there he saw Matthew who was sitting on the bench to collect the taxes. He told him, follow me, and Matthew stood up and followed him. Matthew made a banquet and invited his friends, as a farewell to his old life and the beginning of a new one with the Master. This with the purpose that his friends would meet his new friend, the Lord Jesus, who brought the good news of salvation that filled the void that money could not fill. This generated criticism and controversy from the scribes and Pharisees, who wondered in bewilderment why the Lord Jesus sat next to tax collectors and sinners. The Master, listening to them, told them, The healthy do not need a doctor, but the sick. Go, then, and learn what it means, I want mercy, and not sacrifice. Because I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners, to repentance. Matthew, upon hearing the Lord, was amazed at his words, and without hesitation, he gave up his life and left everything to follow Jesus, later becoming one of his twelve disciples. Before continuing, we would like to invite you to visit our official page, Origins 88. You can find the link in the description of this video or search for us directly in your browser. There you will find a large number of biblical and historical studies related to the Bible. We continue with the video. Matthew received teaching directly from the Lord. He ministered and preached with the others, all serving the Lord Jesus. He witnessed the resurrection and the arrival of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, and also announced the good news of Christ, constituting his mission. Matthew, because he was the only apostle with recording skills and with access to ink and paper, wrote the first and oldest gospel. What we know about Matthew after the events of the Gospels and the Book of Acts, is that he probably committed himself to some evangelistic and missionary ministry, like the other apostles. According to the story, he evangelized in Judea, then was a missionary in Ethiopia and Persia. There he defeated two magicians called Zeros and Arphaxat, who were sorcerers from the region and were worshipped as gods. The king's son was seriously ill, so the king asked both wizards for help. These tried to heal the king's son, however, they did not get any results. On his part, Matthew was brought before the king thanks to the help of an Ethiopian eunuch, who was baptized by the apostle Philip some time ago. The eunuch asked the king for permission for Matthew to try to save his son, and he of course agreed. Matthew entered the room and prayed to heal the boy. 
After a few minutes, the boy woke up and consequently, the apostle was proclaimed a hero, while the two magicians Zeros and Arfaxat were totally humiliated. After a few days, the king and his entire family were baptized. From the looks of it, Matthew lived for a long time in Antioch, and it is there that he writes his gospel. Due to his outstanding ecclesiastical interest, it is possible to perceive the reality of a dedicated and disciplined community, mainly Hebrew if we bring up its origin, but encouraged by a great missionary impetus. Matthew wrote the gospel of him probably around the year 80 after Christ, originally written in Hebrew or perhaps Aramaic. He structured his gospel into narrative episodes followed by a teaching episode. He tried to present Jesus as the Messiah that the people expected, he also wanted to remember the most important moments of his life, his ministry, and his death. For example, Matthew includes the narrative of the birth of Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount, and also recounts the events of the Resurrection. There are several versions about how Matthew died, one of them says that he had a natural death, which is the least likely to be true, since as we know, all the apostles were murdered except for John. Another version narrates that he was martyred for opposing the marriage of King Hersiacus with his niece Iphigenia, who had converted to Christianity thanks to Matthew's preaching. Another says that he was stoned, beheaded and burned in Ethiopia. The other is based on the Talmud, which states that he was sentenced to death by the Sanhedrin of the Jewish religion. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Matthew 22 verse 37